One of the most common words we all heard in 2023 from health influencers on social media is the word carcinogen. From bread, meat, milk to something like bath bomb and tattoo ink, everything leads to cancer is what these videos told us. We are at Apollo Hospital in Bengaluru where I will be speaking to an oncologist, a medical professional who deals with cancer cases day in and day out to tell us what these words mean and whether we should be this scared about everything around us. What exactly do we need to understand when we hear the word carcinogen? As far as cancer is concerned, they are all risk factors. So there's, no, there's nothing that's an absolute cause of cancer. Okay. So there are various risk factors and higher the risk factors, the longer the exposure to any particular risk factor uh, and, and with higher intensity, the more likelihood of causing okay. cancer. Okay. Now when we talk about carcinogens, okay, when you look at a WHO classification of carcinogens, they are about a thousand molecules that exist. But they classify carcinogens based on the strength of evidence available okay. in humans. Okay. Not so much in terms of the uh, uh, dangerous levels, like okay. one compared to the other. Okay. I've also heard terms like carcinogen group 1, group 2, 2A, 2B, group 3. For a common person, I have absolutely no idea what these mean. So WHO has a body called IARC, mm -hmm. International Association of Research on Cancer. Okay. Now they classify carcinogens into four groups. Okay. Group a, Group B, Group C and Group D. Group D are ones that definitely does not cause cancer okay. and we're going to leave that out. Okay. So Group uh, C is what we say about that there's a possible link. When we say about possible link, uh, it means that uh, there may be some evidence but the evidence does not exist in humans. Okay. Okay. That's, so that's the kind of the, uh, the Group 3 category. Then you have the Group 2 category. And group 2 category is linked is split into group 2A and 2B. Okay. And in 2B it says that there's a probable link in humans, not definite but probable link. And you have the 2B, which is there is some link but not with humans but in animal studies. Okay. And then you have the most important which is your group A, but there's a definite link between those, uh, those uh, molecules and with cancer, for example, we talk about nicotine, we okay. talk about alcohol, we talk about asbestos, we talk about ionizing radiation, uh, uh, certain drugs uh, that causes cancer. So all of these are classified as group uh, group A, which definitely causes cancer. But if I go through these uh, reels on my social media, it seems like I should not be eating anything, using anything, because breads have uh, carcinogen, processed meat, processed milk, bath bombs, tattoo ink. The, the list goes on. So all of these may have some chemicals that may have some evidence of a, of, of a carcinogenicity either in humans or animals or non-human animal studies. But WHO does not specify as to what is the uh, dosage of exposure that is required to cause cancer. Just because a molecule is a carcinogen does not mean that it is going to cause cancer. Okay. Uh, it just depends upon the amount of exposure. For example, when you take about say a, a group A uh, you have of course nicotine and you have processed meat. Okay. Now both, what WHO is saying is there is sufficient evidence that they may cause cancer in humans. Okay. But the amount of exposure required for both of them are completely different. Okay. Uh, as opposed to tobacco uh, tobacco versus your processed. processed meat. And you look at a group 3, the third level group, uh, you have things like tea, coffee in them. But the amount of exposure that is required and possibly the link is very very so remote that even though it can be classified as possible association, okay. I don't think anybody worries about having tea or coffee. Okay, it seems like we all are after <laughs> these scare mongering We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be. See, government has certain regulations mm -hmm. that the quantities that are supposed to be present in certain, in the food items are supposed to be so low okay. uh, that I think a lot of these are myths and fear mongering rather than the actual causality. <laughs>